Bruce Lee for the first time? Uh, when I came in contact with Bruce Lee the first time, I met him at James Lee's house in Oakland, California. Bruce was a taskmaster, and uh, we did a lot of footwork. Um, there was um, a lot of sparring that went on. If, uh, back in uh, the 60s, it was revolutionary for people to be sparring in the martial arts with, you know, in full contact with gear on and that. And uh, um, he expected you to do uh, more than what you thought you could do, so he pushed. One of the extraordinary events um, I remember was that uh, Bruce used to tell uh, a story about he'd go to Yip Man's house early and stand outside and wait for the rest of the students to show up and tell them all that there was no class that night and they'd all leave and then he'd go in and get a private lesson. And I thought that was a good idea, but if I were to do that to my buddies, they wouldn't believe me in the first place and if, they, if I got away with it, they'd kill me. Anyway, I started showing up about a half hour early and making enough noise outside of the house for him to let me in. So uh, it got, I never would push it too far. I'd never show up an hour early, but usually 45 minutes to a half hour. And then we discussed the philosophies because this was of a high interest to me. And he was an extraordinary individual as far as the philosophies go. Uh, in the martial arts, you hear all kinds of things like uh, use the man's energy against him, you know, follow his force and redirect it, uh, steal a step. Uh, everybody had the buzzwords, but nobody knew um, what, how to do it. He did. And uh, when he did, he was extraordinary. Well, he didn't like to put names on things, but he had to call it something. So Jeet is uh, to intercept. And Kuhn is fist, and then Do is way. And so um, him, it, the foundation of Jeet Kune Do is simplicity and economy. So that was the simplest way he could get his idea across. So uh, Jeet Kune Do is really the art of intercepting. When I was over at the house, and it would be a, a social event, uh, Bruce would put the television on and we'd sit on the couch and he'd have a set of weights on one end and a set of weights on the other. So he'd do reverse curls while he was watching television. And then you better not be in the way when he decided to switch to the other side to use the, to exercise the other arm because he would, he was clear across that couch and, and nothing flat. So you, I was watching him and the television so I wouldn't get run over in the path. Uh, but that was one of the ways he used to do it. Well, he, he hit and kicked. Uh, um, the hitting would uh, go completely through the glove and it would be like a, a stinging sensation. And if you weren't properly set up for it, it could uh, pull the muscles in your neck. Uh, I saw um, uh, a man that was there one day that he was um, a friend of Bruce's and he was a practitioner in another martial arts. but. Uh, Bruce said, let's do some kicking. Who's going to hold the folk submit? Well, the rest of us there, we all decided it was time to look in the other direction or go someplace else because nobody wanted to hold it. Well, he didn't know any better, see. So he went and he was going to hold the folk submit. So I was trying to explain to him how to do it to keep from being hurt, you know. And uh, he said, yeah, yeah. So he went up there and just held the glove out with one hand and Bruce did a sidekick and dislocated the shoulder and we took him to the emergency room. He was always play, but play seriously. You know, he wanted us to have the attitude of that it was fun to do, but be very conscientious about what we were doing, you know, and uh, precision was what he was about. He was always, you know, hit the mark on the target. Uh, he was... Uh, he really enjoyed watching people excel. The Jeet Kune Do is made up of, uh, as, as far as being an innovator, uh, Jeet Kune Do is made up of uh, uh, Wing Chun, uh, Western boxing and Western fencing. And uh, he modified the Wing Chun to suit his style and himself. He also modified the fencing and he modified the boxing. So, he 
looked at everything, but he saw this, you know, some things were gross motions, and he said that, you know, if you draw the hand back to hit with, uh, you telegraph it, and it gives your opponent plenty of time to hit you before you can hit him. So it was all to the point to where um, he was the only person I knew that could teach awareness. There was always gems of wisdom that were, uh, how would you say, uh, strewn about uh, when Bruce was around because he always had something, you know, and it all stemmed from uh, the Taoist. Uh, again, he liked uh, his favorite, which is called using no way is way. And uh, he also expounded on the difference between doing and being. And he says, if you're out there and you're going through motion like a punch or a kick and you're uh, just say you're trying too hard or something, well, you're doing that kick. But as soon as you be that kick, the kick in it, you in its totality, then you're being. And that was what he was always looking for in himself as well as his students, the difference between doing and being. Fran and I and another friend of mine unpacked Bruce's library when it came back from Hong Kong after his death. And uh, we cataloged the library and looked at it. And the majority of books that were in there were Tai Chi. And there were a lot of Western boxing books. And there was some old, old boxing books, so old that you didn't want to open them because they, looked, they were going to fall apart. And of course, on fencing. And then um, martial arts of all kinds. But Bruce was the type that I went with him one time on a, how do you say, a, a, not an Easter egg hunt, but a, a book hunt. And we went to this old bookstore. And there was a section that had, you know, boxing and fencing and martial arts at the time. This was in the 60s, you know, there was not that many around. And instead of looking at the books there, he'd just buy the whole section and then take the, it home with him and then take his time to go through them that way. See, so he had a lot of books in the library that he couldn't throw a book away that was unheard of, you know, because he treasured the book so much. But there were some books that were useless to him that were, again, like I said, that uh, didn't fit in with his principles of the simplicity and the economy. So uh, again, that. And then um, I, w I had access to his library uh, when he was doing film as well, when he was still here. And I started seeing books on lighting and uh, different aspects of the film industry starting to show up in the library. So he, he was concentrating on, he had to know everything about what he was doing at the time. More than likely when he was on the set and you were there with him and you had a job to do, he knew the job as well as you did. The fencer, I believe, that uh, got him started on this one was uh, his older brother was a uh, Olympic fencing champion and uh, at the time Bruce was training in the style of Wing Chun under uh, Master Yip Man and Bruce being Bruce, Bruce is um, how would I say as a young man a bit cocky and I guess his older brother had had his fill of Bruce and his bragging or uh, that at the time so um, his brother told him okay I'll fight you but you have to do it with one hand behind your back. So he used the fencing against Bruce and he just slapped Bruce all, everywhere, you know, hit him at will. So that's when Bruce's interest in fencing started. And um, he had the book on Dempsey and uh, the falling step is, was um, something that he uh, was uh, using as well as um, uh, initiating into the, how did Bruce Lee change my life? Uh, I've been all over the world. Uh, I've done films, uh, you know. I did drag in the Bruce Lee story and trained Jason Scott Lee to portray Bruce. I did the choreography for it. Uh, my whole life changed in a direction that I, you know, never even contemplated that when I first started training in the martial arts. So it would be that it was uh, 
if my life was on a narrow beam then, it was like there is no beam now because you can't describe it. It just, it's completely uh, a thousandfold, uh, as well as enjoyment and the appreciation for what I do and the people I come in contact with. I was uh, working out in my patio at the house and uh, my oldest son uh, yelled out the kitchen window, Dad, uh, they said on TV that Bruce Lee just died. <laughs> so when I went in, uh, it was over with, so I had to wait. And then I started making phone calls. And uh, all the people that had trained with me, that trained with Bruce, uh, none of them had heard it. I was the first news of it at that time. And uh, I didn't believe it. <laughs> 